I wanted to start off this video by quoting Slim Jesus. A lot of y'all just Twitter flex. <laughs> what is going on with modern day rap music? My goodness, it has just changed so much in a weird way. Uh, I don't know if you know who Slim Jesus is, but if you want a good giggle, if you're like my age, you'll definitely get a giggle out of uh, Slim Jesus. And uh, we got to talk about Twitter and Twitter flex and Carrie Gascos, or however you say her name. Uh, and boy, this has been a, a controversial post on Twitter and we have to read it because I, I want to give some uh, context to what the developers are saying. And I wasn't really going to make a post about this because it kind of annoyed me until this happened right here where Matt says, but there was no defense of it. Still makes no sense. You didn't just hurt the free to play players with it. I don't know what's considered a whale, but a thousand dollars in a year on a game, which is ridiculous and still not competitive. Do you guys expect people to pay four to five thousand dollars to catch up? And she says, Yeah, I do. I have to I have to make a video about this. I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, I gotta give her props for uh being honest. Uh, I just don't know what should have been said. Like yeah, I'd say to some degree, people should spend four to five K a, a year to keep up want. Not for anybody for whom it was unpalatable or, you know, someone that doesn't want to do that. Uh, what I want is for the people at the tip of the spear to get him and for most of the next wave of people to get him, then he next comes around more like Treya without the raid. Uh, I mean, so the context is, is she's saying, yeah. Malik was supposed to be hard and reserved for the people that's been uh, four or five K a year. Uh, you know, I'm in the category of people, and I just want to say this right now. I know exactly how much money I spent on this game last year. And I think most people don't. And if you want to go into your iTunes account and add it up or your Google Play account and add it up, uh, because it, the number will be, uh, twice as high as you think. I know it was for me. And it's like uh, people I know that go to Vegas because I live a couple hours away from Vegas, like three hours away from Vegas. And, oh, how'd you do this weekend? Oh, I broke even. Everybody says they break even. And it's like, well, did you write it down? Do you know? And I'm sure if they wrote it down, they would know how much money they lost. And, uh, you know, if you're in the case where you say, I think I spent X amount of dollars last year, I, I, I challenge you to go and pull up your, your bank records and add it up. And I, I promise you it's going to be twice as high as you think. Uh, it's something to consider. I, I did it, and the number was twice as high as I thought easily. Uh, but I got this Twitter thread is, is insane in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, McMall is and so on and high ground. And I, I want to say this before I get into the heart of it. Uh, I met Carrie once. I don't know her. I've never really had a lot of inter interactions with her. Uh, the one time I met her, uh, she seemed really nice and really smart, uh, very modest. Uh, the one thing I got from her was that she worked really hard. She worked so hard that she had to bring her dog to work because she was working like 12 hours days, six days a week, and she had her cute dog, and she had the nicest little dog and uh, it was adorable. And it's like, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for that. You know, if you're a dog person, I'm just gonna automatically like you. You know, it's just the way it goes. But this conversation on Twitter, um, and I know it's her personal account and she could say whatever she wants and I'm all about that. Uh, but you know, people are upset about the way uh, Malik was released. And I think for me, uh, I didn't have a problem with the the difficulty or the character requirements. Uh, my my main issue was is that we got one day's notice and there was only three days to uh, do the event. And for me, I happened to be out of town those three exact days. I went to Coachella and um, there's no reception at Coachella. And knowing that the event took hours, and a lot of people it took like five, six, seven hours to complete, I knew that I wasn't going to have time because I had other plans that I made over a year in advance, and so I didn't get Malik. And you know what? Oh, well. It just seems really lame that uh, we had one day's notice and three days uh, to do it. Uh, in fact, uh, if the event had been longer and uh, when I was in town... Uh, most like, I'll just be frank with you. Most likely they, they would have got my money. Um, I spend 
you know, and not that I think it's great everybody should do it, but I do spend. And it says, everyone is welcome to their opinion, of course, but you can go back a few weeks and tell that to the Wells around Darth Revan release would really help out. And basically uh, what that means right there is that Darth Revan, a lot of people got Darth Revan very easily, and a lot of people were crowding out the top 10 and leaderboards, and uh, the whales were frustrated because uh, they didn't have anything exclusive, and Malik is something that is exclusive, and I'll give you that. And I'm talking about getting yelled at by whales for the weeks around Darth Revan. You're disrespecting your paying customers. Then a week or two passed. You only do this for whales. It's a cycle and it's exhausting. And um, not a lot of sympathy there from me about it being exhausting. I, I don't know what you expect <laughs> from the community. And I'm going to propose the same thing that I've proposed for a long time because uh, one of the things that uh, I really liked about this game called Warframe is every week they had a like a one hour Twitter live stream. And the developers who make these decisions that impact players like me who have spent thousands of dollars on the game or everyone that played this game, even though this game is free to play, there's a time investment. I'm going to say that anybody that has played this game every day for years, even if they've spent no money, they have an investment of time. So the game is not really free if you have spent hundreds of hours, maybe even thousands of hours playing this game. And so, of course, you know, whether you've spent money or not, you're going to be very passionate and to hide and not listen to the community or not at least understand or what the community is doing, uh, but to be dismiss dismissive and say it's a cycle and it's exhausting and that the, the opinions are just wrong, uh, it really bothers me. And with the game Warframe, what they do is that they have this one hour uh, Twitter show basically and the main developers are right there in the face of the community. And I think uh, Star Wars Celebration being there and, and coming face to face with some of the fans or Twitter is excellent. There's really no reason for it not to happen uh, because, uh, you know, some of the decisions that are made here in the game uh, makes me wonder if they actually pay, play the game themselves or if they care about the game. And uh, it seems like a lot of the comments are you know, just very dismissive of the overall player base. And I, I wish that they would just go head to head uh, with people on a, a, a Twitch stream or a YouTube stream, you know, uh, be accountable, right? Uh, but to say that it's exhausting and it's a cycle. And then um, says, I agree it's gotten worse. I have theories about why that is, uh, but it's not because we've suddenly changed. It reminds me of the, a lot of this time last year. The catalyst was something we did, but that was the tipping point reflecting bigger issues this year. It was the refresh change, and she's talking about converting the refreshes from eight to five, uh, you know, and then they cut the the rewards of like um, uh, Rolo and IPD from 80 down to 40, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, it's like, um, Carrie, you have suddenly changed. All the rewards have been cut back. You lied about the cadence. You promised more communication, but it has been nearly non-existent. I understand you're in a thankless job, but lying to others and apparently yourself isn't helping. Now, I don't know if she was lying, uh, and there might be a loophole here, but I was under the impression that they were always going to give us a week notice. And and then, you know, she kind of uh, says, well, I think you lied is what I would take objection to. The character cadence described e existing releases. Malik was a new release type. Oh, that is so ticky tacky. You said in the uh, okay, uh, uh, super legendary events they can do whatever you want, but a, uh, a a hero's journey or legendary event they said, oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll give you weeks notice, but um, they changed the we changed the this is a new release type. Some people hated it. I get it. The goal was to make it super legendary. To offset reworks and reduction of marquees and to link the meta. And uh, that's fine. Actually, I kind of can give her the benefit of the doubt. I think my issue is like play test your stuff. Uh, you know, don't release something and then uh, nerf uh, Sith Empire the week later. You know, they can't, you know, Sith can't gain bonus Turp Reader, you know, Palpatine. And I understand they want to make a super exclusive character, but my goodness, play test it, you know, get it out. 
uh, right the first time. And, uh, you know, especially when they advertised the uh, Darth Revan having synergy with uh, Sith Assassin, that was effectively uh, anybody that geared up Sith Assassin in the last month uh, wasted their time because now they're going to be going up against Malak and it was a complete waste of time. Um, I mentioned then the road ahead, but that was only two days earlier. I don't even know why you would bring that up. So that's why I'm hitting it on uh, giving more notice that changes are going to change even if we don't specify those changes or change the way we release characters completely, move away from the panic thon. Okay, I'm all about that. And you know what? It keeps going. But the, the reality is, what were we going to say without sounding defenses? People are making our argument for us. It's better that that happens when, than we protest too much. Uh, and then, you know, it says, but there was no defense for it. It still makes no sense. You just didn't hurt the free-to-play players, and I don't know what is considered a whale, but $1,000 a year in a game is what, which is ridiculous and, and still not competitive. Do you guys expect people to pay four to $5,000 to catch up? Yeah, that's the answer. Uh, so um, I don't know. Uh, my solution to this would be, um, you know, I really, th I, would, I would totally think it would be awesome if there was a weekly uh, Twitch stream for one hour where uh, developers basically had to face to face the players directly and and read the hate and talk to the hate and take direct calls from people. Uh, the Warframe developers do it. So I know that other games can do it too, and I'm sure there's restrictions. And uh, but I, I think it would be a good experience for everybody if uh, more game developers did that. Uh, even Overwatch, um, the head guy over Overwatch, is very uh, public and you know makes videos and publishes them. And uh, you know this is a monster game. You know that takes in you know over a hundred million dollars a year. Um, it doesn't seem unreasonable that we can get one hour a week from them. That's all I'm asking for is one hour a week. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and keep on gaming.